What would you say to members thinking of voting for reform? Don't. Um, <laughs> they offer nothing at all. I mean, we're talking about... First of all, it's not a political party. It's an independent private company. Um, I know a lot of people I've seen online, people saying they've joined. But they actually haven't. They're paying money, uh, essentially, to Nigel Farage and his mates. You know, this is a yet another public school, um, privately educated city uh, broker. You know, he made his, his money by in, in trading commodities, specifically the metals market, um, before working for another big financial institutions. This guy's got nothing in common with our members. And when I say nothing in common, I mean absolutely nothing in common. Hello and welcome to CW Live. As always, there is so much going on and this week's episode really does encapsulate everything that is so great about our union. We'll be bringing you updates from the workplace, the general election, our equality work, and we have been out about in the community as well. And we have our senior deputy GenSec, Tony Kearns, with us in the studio to go through it all with. But first up, a bit of industry news for you. And let's start with network changes. They have started to happen in Royal Mail units across the UK. Mixed reports on their success and lots of members raising questions on this issue. Deputy Gen Sec Postal Martin Walsh has been very clear that he wants to see further improvements in the finish times. We caught up with National Executive Member Tony Bush, who gave us the latest news. Just giving a quick update on Network Window, which went live on Monday. The 17th of June, um, with uh, the air aircraft coming out of the sky, a processing realignment, pad revision, and a national uh, network line haul review revision. So, uh, obviously, we've picked up a number of reports from our reps on the activity that's taken place since the 17th, and obviously, that's bedding in. So, uh, that contributed to later start and finishes in delivery. Uh, we issued a national PIR document uh, jointly signed with the business last week, uh, and also an enhanced PIR for Scotland. Um, and we're due to issue a performer that starts to collate some information from our divisional reps uh, and our area reps. So the divisional reps will collate that information uh, and review that with their the rods within their regional steering boards and the catchment, uh, the mail centres in their catchment area. And then we've got our uh, local mail centre catchment groups where all of our area reps with their interfaces will review network window, how it's working, some of the issues and feedback to us. And then on the 9th of July, We've got a national CW Royal Mail meeting with all of the rods across the UK, all of the divisional reps across the UK to review the, the, the progress uh, and the deployment of network window, any associated issues that come out of that uh, and start then to get into the conversations around whether further mitigations can be made, whether there's any issues that we need to start to think about jointly uh, in order to, to get through to the next six weeks and 12 week PIR. So, Alive to it, we're picking up all of the issues that have been created from our representatives across the UK and we'll continue to update our members through these sort of forums. So thanks very much. Thanks very much for that, Tony. Now, here's a bit more on the ongoing Horizon scandal and subsequent inquiry. Now, no doubt you will have probably seen former sub post mistress Seema Misra on the news recently. And that's because she has rejected an apology from an ex-Fujitsu engineer whose evidence helped convict her. Yeah. Do you accept it? No. And why is that? Certainly because he apologising now, but like he could have done it like ages ago when he when he said he realised or whatever. But like just now, just for the sake of it, only time will tell. It's just the first day. Let's see how cooperative he is with the inquiry. And your story is particularly difficult. It's one of the most difficult of this entire scandal. And he refers to it in his apology. He says that he did not know you were pregnant at the time of your conviction, only learnt of it many years later, and he said it makes it even more tragic. Do you believe that he understands the impact it's had on your life? Nobody can understand. I, I went through it. Sorry, I went through it. Nobody can understand that. It's still really difficult for you to speak it is. about, I know. It is, yeah. Do you want to take a moment? No, that's fine. Sorry, go on, yeah. You still don't have closure, clearly. Why, why is that? Why, do, why is it you still can't find closure? This isn't giving it it's to you. It's not. Clearly. It's not. Uh, today I'm here to hear from Mr. Jenkins. Mm -hmm. Why did he did what he did? Uh, that's, my, that's what I wanted to hear. And do you feel you're getting those answers? Not yet. Not yet. Only half a day gone yet. Not yet. 
just a reminder there as well. The post office wrongly prosecuted about 700 sub postmasters between 1999 and 2015 for theft and fraud based on incorrect data from their IT system. Seema was one of those wrongly convicted. She was sent to jail while she was pregnant. The ex Fujitsu engineer Gareth Jenkins, who was one of the architects of the Faulty Horizon system, has apologized but denies any wrongdoing. The police are now investigating for potential perjury offenses. Finally, Daniel Kretinsky, the Czech billionaire looking to buy Royal Mail's parent company, has stepped up his efforts to make it happen. It's been reported that he's asked both former and current Royal Mail staff to sell their shares to him. Kretinsky will need three quarters of the shareholders to approve the offer to buy the company, and he already owns 27.5% of shares. 72.5% is owned by other big companies like BlackRock and UBS, but Royal Mail staff collectively own about 5.5%. So Kretinsky owning more shares himself will make it easier for him to take over Royal Mail. Time to move on to the general election. Now, I'm very happy to welcome senior deputy Jen Sec. Tony Kearns to the studio. Tony, welcome. Oh, thanks. Lovely to have you here. Uh, we want to talk about the, you know, the issue, the cover, the whole general election um, with you this week. First, how do you see things at the moment? How are things going on? Well, if you believe the opinion polls, um, we're on course a week today when everyone goes to vote for a Labour landslide by the look of things. Mm. Um, it's been interesting watching some of the if you like, debate and discourse around what the, if you like, the two main parties, the parties that are right now are the only two parties that could form a government in this country. Um, it's been interesting to watch, if you like, the comings and goings. In recent days, we've seen the betting scandal. Um, and so, you know, there's a week to go. Who knows what's around the corner? Um, this, it's been full of surprises. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been an interesting watch. Um, not sure it's uh, excited that many people, um, but we'll find that out a week today when, when the polls open. Well, just about the betting scandal, do you think that's something that will majorly affect how voters will go, you know, with just a week to go as well? Has the mood changed much, do you think? I don't think it changes the, changes the mood much. I think what it does do, um, unfortunately, is, is destroy trust in politicians. Because if they're betting on outcomes, and if they're betting on their own outcomes, then, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not making any accusations here, but that, it, that, that sort of opens potential corruption. If you want to bet on yourself to lose, you know, then you can take a dive. Um, don't go on campaign, don't knock on doors, don't leaflet people. Don't put your case uh, and then you lose. And guess what? You win money because you've had a bet on yourself to lose. I think it, it calls into the question people's trust in politics and politicians, which I think is is a real issue um, for for all political parties because you know these are the people who are going to make the day-to-day -day decisions, govern people's lives. Um, and if you don't have trust in those people, then you know you, you're in dangerous dangerous water as far as I'm concerned. And, and a lot needs to be done in the next week on that issue and post the election to build that trust so people can trust politicians and trust that they're going to make the decisions that need to be made um, you know, for the benefit of, of, of ordinary people, for one of a better phrase. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. Now, I just want to show you a little clip that we saw earlier this week. So you may not have caught on, he was writing something, and what he was writing was the word racist on Reform Party leaflets uh, as he was posting through the door. Now, obviously, this guy isn't going to vote Reform. I think we get that much from there. But we have some members on social media that are saying that they will vote for Farage's party. The CWU is affiliated with the Labour Party. What would you say to members thinking of voting for Reform? Don't. Um, they offer nothing at all. I mean, we're talking about... First of all, it's not a political party. It's an independent private company. Um, I know a lot of people I've seen online, people saying they've joined, but they actually haven't. They're paying money uh, essentially to Nigel Farage and his mates. You know, this is a yet another public school, um, privately educated city uh, broker. You know, he made his, his money by in, in trading commodities, specifically the metals market, um, before working for another big financial institutions. This guy's got nothing in common with our members. And when I say nothing in common, I mean absolutely nothing in common. Um, Farage is in this 
um, to represent the class of people that he associates with, and that is the super rich. I'm not just talking about people who are well off. I'm talking about the super rich. You know, he he he, he wheeled and dealed in the city. And they're his friends. And these people only come into politics, a bit like Sunak um, in, in that regard, to represent their, to represent their friends and their, and their friends' interests. And their friends' interests are not aligned with our members' interests. And they do that by stoking up um, rhetoric on this particular occasion um, around the issue of race. Um, and as an anti-racist organisation, which the CWU is, you know, we couldn't state strongly enough and we would advise our members not to vote for reform. I see. OK. Um, let's talk about the deal for working people, the New Deal. <laughs> A campaign uh, founded by the CWU must be proud of that, right? Yeah, I mean, this is the New Deal for workers, um, as it is in the manifesto, was an idea of the CWU. Um, we've taken it on numerous occasions to the TUC. We've taken it on numerous occasions to Labour Party conference. We've taken it to Labour Party national policy forums, and it's ended up in the manifesto. Um, so yeah, I, I think um, the CW can rightly be proud of the of the work it's done in inputting um, this particular item onto the agenda. Look, we've had um, 14 years where the Tories, for want of a better phrase. Of, of waged all out assault on working people and their families in this country um, through various methods. Um, and that's got to stop. Uh, we today got the chance to end that. Um, because if we don't, you know, you've only got to look at um, some of the legislation that they've introduced in recent, the Minimum Services Act. They're going to go further. They're going to make it almost impossible for workers to organise collectively and represent themselves through their democratic elected, elected processes. So having the New Deal in the Labour Party manifesto, we believe, gives us, if you like, one, a bit of pride by having that in there. It was our idea, if you like. And two, a very solid reason, solid ground, you know, to recommend to our members that they vote for that. I see. I oh, appreciate that. Um, one thing we have prided ourselves in uh, is encouraging CWU members to get into politics, making sure it's not simply left to the elite. So General Secretary Dave Ward was out and about over the weekend. Let's take a look at that. What Lee speaks about is, you know, passionate about standing up for people who deserve better in this country. And, you know, because we know Lee, it's really important. We've seen what he's done for our members over the years. We've seen what he's done for workers everywhere. And now he's got a chance to be an MP and stand up for the people of Corby and bring about change for them, bring about change for the country. Um, you know, working class people in Parliament is so important. Uh, I think we've seen too many people in Parliament over the years in all parties, and I'm not knocking everyone, there's some good people out there, of course there is. But one of the reasons that I think trust is not there is because people don't always relate um, to their MPs. You can relate to this guy. I mean, I think for too long, people, certainly working people, have looked at politicians and thought, you don't, you don't look like me, you don't represent me, you don't sound like me. You know, my issues, you know, where are they being represented? So you either leave politics to the playground for the privileged, or you get up and you get involved. And I believe fundamentally that we need more working class people in our politics and in our parliament, so that people can start to see you know, a parliament and politicians that represent them, that look like them, that sound like them, you know, that face the same pressures in life that they've faced. We need to turn around and fundamentally um, uh, change the economy so that it works for working people. You know, and part of that is defending good jobs and raising others up to that standard, not lowering people down so that they face that race to the bottom. That's why it's so crucial. That's why it's so important. And having a government that's going to sit there, talk and listen, uh, to what the workforce has got to say, I think, is really crucial in shaping the future for the Royal Mail and for the workers within the Royal Mail and the wider communication sectors like British Telecom. Well, I think the New Deal for Working People, which is the big campaign message this weekend right across the country uh, for Labour, you're not going to get a better parliamentarian uh, for the Labour Party to see that through to the end. And that's why our members should get out and back uh, people like Lee Barron. That was Dave talking to Lee Barron. Now here's Dave's other video from this weekend. This is Chris Webb and we're going to make sure that he gets elected uh, to Parliament where he's going to represent working class people. CW has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember, uh, joining them on campaigns up and down the country, we're on picket lines, 
with the Dockers in Liverpool and just supporting fellow trade unionists. And that's the upbringing I had, something I'm incredibly proud of. I have an amazing farm and family, and it's one of the reasons why I got into politics, because I saw working class people weren't represented at the highest levels. I think Blackpool has been forgotten about by this government. We've seen it, we've seen the austerity levels. You've now not got, you know, People are just can't make ends meet. It's as simple as that. They're working people are now using food banks and professions that would you would never have thought would have to resort to that. Nurses, um, police staff, working people with decent jobs that now, because of this Tory inflation crisis, because they crashed the economy, are now paying the price. And we need to change that. And that's what we're seeing with this manifesto and what we're seeing especially with the new deal for working people it's workers rights from day one yeah. so that they know they've got that security the worry they have especially in a seasonal town like Blackpool is that they don't know if they've got that secure work they're, they're going from paycheck to paycheck struggling I see that with my work with the food bank I see it with my work um, with the mental health charity I was proud to be chair of trustees for so many years and people are struggling and it's affecting now not just their livelihood but their health as well. We know in here maternity and paternity rights will be a big thing for working families and giving them those rights from day one. But it's about rebalancing the scales here mm. and making sure that workers um, are respected in the workplace but also that they've got the rights that they deserve putting in a hard day's graft and that they know that they've got that paycheck coming, they know that they've got the support of trade unions and the government when it comes to their employment. That was Dave talking to Labour's candidate for Blackpool, Chris Webb. Tony, you've got Lee Barron there, you've got Chris Webb, Dahir Ali as well, a CWU member is also running. Why is it so important for working people to put themselves forward for these positions? I think I sort of referenced the, the points I made earlier about Farage going into politics to represent the class of people that you know he 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 works with or if you like op operates within. And I think the same applies to people like um, Tahir and Chris and Lee. In that I, I believe everyone works from a frame of reference. They become products of their environment. So if you take Lee Barron for instance, his environment. He was a postal worker mm. um, in a mail centre in Northampton. I think I, I, if I remember that rightly, grew up as a as a postal worker with a young family. He knows what it means to be a worker, and he knows what it means to be a worker under the Tory government um, and all the problems that's brought to him as an individual. And he can take those lived experiences, what's it like in the workplace, what's it like working and represent the trade union, and what it's like for working class people and their families, um, and he can take that experience into the House of Commons, and when key decisions are going to be made, key propositions that are up for debate, that's, if you like, the voice of the workers in Parliament, and I, I think that's absolutely essential. Is it going to be more difficult for them being fro you know working people getting into that space though because obviously they're not part of uh, an elite they have to you know essentially go from the bottom up in this instance yeah they're not recognized as part of the establishment uh, you know if you look at um you know you look you look at the, the the cohort of prime ministers we've had for the last 14 years you know eton college winchester college all the if you like, all the, all the public school boys and girls, uh, for want of a better phrase, um, you know, who, who, who pretend that they have the interest of the working class uh, at heart and they don't. So, yeah, they sit outside, if you like, what is the perceived establishment in this country. Um, but I think, I think that's a good thing. I don't think they're tainted um, by, by those links that, that, if you like, those other people have had. And as I say, they can bring their own real world lived experience of what it's like to be. Um, Ordinary, I don't particularly like using that word, but ordinary working class people um, growing up in working class communities from working class backgrounds and bringing that experience you know, into the House of Commons. Mm -hmm. Now, let's get to the issue of using your vote. Some people have been switched off by mm -hmm. politics and politicians for some of the reasons that you mentioned, you know, lack of trust, the lies, lack of change and, and so on. But why should people vote? How important is it that people go out and vote? I, I think it's extremely important. Um, I can say this, in a week's time, there's going to be a vote that's going to form the government of this country and make decisions over people's lives for the next five years, yeah? If you don't go out and vote, somebody else is going to make that decision for you because other people will go out and vote um, and they may not vote for somebody who represents your interests. They may not vote for somebody, um, you know, who, who, who wants to do 
uh, if like the right thing for you and your f and, and your families. So someone else will make that decision. There is going to be an election a week today. There is going to be a new government a week tomorrow. Um, and if you don't vote, somebody else will exercise their vote, and therefore the government don't make decisions on your behalf or on your part you'll have had no say in it's crucial that people get out and vote but then let's you know look at the other side of the situation obviously you'll have people that are just not interested in politics at all but then you'll have some that are like well it seems like a foregone conclusion that labor are going to come in is there any point in voting then or does it really matter who i cast my vote for if that's going to be the next government and what would you say to those people who have that kind of mindset at the moment the only way you can hold, if you like, your MPs or the government uh, to account um, is by exercising your voice. Um, and in a representative democracy, which is what we have in this country through the parliamentary, uh, through the parliamentary system, that, that, that all p it hinges on people voting. Yeah. Um, and I, again, I say, if, if you don't vote, someone else, someone else is going to vote. Um, and there is a sort of mood, I think, there is a foregone conclusion that you know who's going to be the next government and all we're talking about here um is 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 the majority but that's that's not a reason not to get involved because of course if everybody took that attitude of stepping back because it's a foregone conclusion then it wouldn't be a foregone conclusion <laughs> and you might get a result that actually you think oh, i don't have to vote because i know what's going to happen i'm happy with what's going to happen and then all those people who think that stay at home and then before you know it what you thought was going to happen doesn't happen mm. because people haven't gone out and voted so it's crucially important the other thing is all my experience is Go out and vote because, uh, listen, the establishments in this country, if they could get away with you not voting and they could get away with just ruling without your vote, they would do so. The more people have vote, the more people it, it shows uh, are, are, are interested and are prepared uh, to be involved in this limited democratic process, mm -hmm. the less likely it is at some point in the future they'll try and take that away. So use your power, use your voice. Yeah, it's not, and I say this often, uh, politics, not spectator sports. I know people, a lot of people think, oh, this doesn't affect me. Listen, it affects everybody. You look at like rampant inflation, you look at some of the decisions, outrageous decisions that were made by the government around COVID. These things affect people's daily lives. Um, whether they're prepared to acknowledge that, whether they're conscious of that, they do on a daily basis. And it's important that you have your say over who makes those decisions on your behalf. I appreciate that. Now, we've talked about the workplace, we've talked about the general election. Now, let's get on to equality. Uh, last week, an ethnic minorities workers event was held here at CWU HQ, and I popped in to see what it was like. We're here today, basically a networking event with our BAME representatives to get everybody in a room to network, get to know each other, support each other, and actually asking our representatives, what do you want to see from us in the future? Justice for Grenfell campaign was set up in the aftermath of the Grenfell Tower fire and it's always good to know um, that the unions who have actually been really brilliant in terms of supporting the campaign and keeping us going to kind of meet their members and to share what I know um, and to help them to stay active or encourage them to stay active. I'm quite outspoken, I've represented someone when I wasn't even a rep, I've done the training, I've become an equality officer, I've moved up in the branch, I've represented and done cases and I've been recognised and encouraged to um, put myself forward for the executive when that happened uh, three years ago. First step, get involved. Get involved in your union, that's the first step to anything. That's why we've just had to hear Ali, who's a Labour MP and standing in the next general election, was a rep on the ground, became involved in his union, is now a Labour MP and, you know, stands for the CWU. That's what it's all about and that's why it's important as well for branches at future networking events to send members who maybe aren't reps yet but could be in the future. I'd say you need to speak out. Because if you don't let your union know what's happening, they may not see it from your perspective and your lived experience. And then suggest working together to change that, to make sure it is more representative. Find out the steps that you need to know to get to positions that you want to get to. And then once you do, 
then do the same for somebody else. So it's the each one teach one. Keep getting involved, expose yourself, and just keep uh, putting yourself forward for roles and when opportunities become available. People will not be around forever, um, so opportunities will always be presented. It may take time, but don't give up. Um, I certainly didn't expect to be where I am, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it, and I hope that that uh, shows people and demonstrates that things do, do happen in a short spaces of time, or it might take longer. Thoroughly enjoyed today. The Journey for Justice was brilliant. Yvette's speech this morning was so moving and she made an important point that we must stick together and we've got so much work to do and we must continue this struggle um, for, for all of our black ethnic minority, BAME, multicultural, however you want to term it, it's important that we all work together um, and become great inspirations uh, and lead others. I want to thank everyone who has come along. We've got 50 representatives in the room. I know it's been a success. When the next event, I'm going to need a bigger room. So let's keep building and let's keep getting bigger. That really was a great event. Powerful speakers and lots of engagement from everyone, as you can see. Tony, it's great to see that alongside our, you know, our vital issues and everything that's going on at the moment, the CWU is still finding time to really promote and prioritize uh, diversity and inclusion. Isn't that right? Absolutely. And I think it's extremely important. It is, as far as we're concerned, our day job to do that. Um, you know, it, it, this is not something I think you can leave in the bottom drawer and then go campaigning on at weekends. It is crucial. You you look around that room. Look at how many BAME members and representatives attended that network gathering. You know, we have BAME members in the workplace, and and our responsibility is to make sure that we bring them on and represent their interests just as much as any other interest that we represent. Mm. And I understand that you're working alongside Dave actually about you know going about this new recruitment strategy, not just you know for members but also for reps. So what would you say to someone who is considering whether or not to get involved in the first place? What would you say to them to convince them? Again, I mean, it's a bit like the general election. Um, we have reps, um, they um, come together, they discuss the problems that our members face, they form collective decisions, those collective decisions eventually feed up uh, through our democratic processes to become national policy. Become a rep, have your say in that, make your voice heard, make the voice of the people you work with heard by becoming a rep. You go, you know, everybody has an eye, everybody in the workplace will see something in the workplace, manager will do something, a diktat will come down off hand and go, I don't agree with that, I don't think that's right. Well, become a rep and put your side of the arguments and put your case and that will filter up and become the union policy, yeah. get involved. I can understand there may be some people out there that are a bit reluctant because they're a bit nervous or they don't feel as if they'll be listened to so as much, whether it be in politics, you know, voicing their opinion or casting their vote or becoming a rep or a member. And so for people that are a little bit more nervous, what would you say to them to, you know, help them understand that, you know, it's a safe space, you know, it's, it's comfortable enough for them to come out and to, to be vocal? I mean, it's a difficult one for the, for those people who, who don't who feel that they're not naturally, if you like, forward, uh, step forward, you know. But the point is, everybody was some wasn't a rep at some time. So well, there was a time when I wasn't a rep, and I was just a worker in my office, and we didn't have a rep. And I thought we need a rep. Who's that going to be? Nobody else wanted it. So you know, I step forward. And once you talk to other reps, you begin to understand that some of the problems and the frustrations that, that you're experiencing are elsewhere and you have collective ideas. So other reps will be there to help you. There'll be more senior reps who can give you guidance. And we do have training courses once you get to a certain level of representation um, about, tra uh, about trade union skills. So, you know, there's, there's a whole support network there through other reps and, and through the union in general, if you like, as one family um, to come together and, 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 and assist you through that journey of, of being a rep. Incredible. All right. Is there anything else you wanted to add? Any final message to our members at all? Yeah, I mean, in terms of a final message, um, I mean, a week to date is a general election. Um, we've had 14 years of, you know, all, as I said earlier, all out assault on the working class of this country. You had David Cameron and George Osborne with their austerity, um, which are told, caused untold misery. Um, for our members and their families. Then you had Theresa May, um, who continued that austerity with a nice little bit of racism um, thrown in from here. And then we had to suffer Boris Johnson. Um, Boris Johnson's partying, drinking, lying through COVID, where we had members who couldn't even go to family funerals. And he was, here he was having a jolly up 
And then that was followed by Liz Truss, who completely crashed the economy and, co- and plunged even more people into extreme poverty, to be followed by the richest um, prime minister um, this country's ever seen, by far and away the richest MP, has no affinity whatsoever with ordinary working people. And a week today is the chance to end that misery. Um, and so that's why New Deal for Workers, that's why the CW is an affiliate of the Labour Party, um, is recommending to our members that we go out and vote Labour. And not only that, but the Labour government is committed to bringing in the Hillsborough law, which in itself is worthy of support. Amazing. Tony, thank you so much. Hope to catch up again soon. Right, that is it for CW Live this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, we're going to go live next week as a run-up to voting day. So it'll be your chance to tune in and ask questions directly to our guests and find out what you need to know before you decide to vote. But if there's something or someone you'd like to see on the show in the future or perhaps you wanted to share your thoughts on things so far, comment down below. We'll see you again next week. Until then, stick with the union.